So as I told you, Albini Energia is the company I'm working for. It's uh, an energy saving company and it was uh, established in 2011. Uh, honestly, I started my activity in the textile field in 2004 with uh, Cotonifici Albini. Cotonifici Albini is the textile mill of Albini Group, uh, is uh, a shorting fabric producer and is the most important uh, short fabric producer in Europe. It's very well known uh, in uh, all over the world because of the Italian fashion and the group has many factories in Italy, in the north and in the south, in the east of Europe. During the time between 2004 and 2011, I had a follow all the new factories we have built up. So in Egypt, in the south of Italy, in the east of Europe. And luckily, I had also the possibility to follow some training in the textile procedures. That's, I believe, is quite important for our activity today because our company is mainly focused on textile field. This is because we believe that energy efficiency, of course, can be pursued in each, in any kind of, of industries. But if you want to touch all uh, the, the, um, the subject in a, in a company, you cannot just stay on the normal and common services like pumps, station or boiler houses or compressed air. I think we think that one of the most important part for energy efficiency is also to touch the process. And of course, anybody can know all the processes around the world. Uh, so it's better to try to focus yourself uh, in what you know well. And that's the reason why the 90, 95% of our customers are mainly related to the textile. As I told you, as I was telling you, I, uh, we made some training for in textile, especially for finishing and the dye houses. Later on, we are going to discuss all the textile processes one by one, especially the wet processes, and we'll try to understand how you can suggest your customers some good example, some good projects to save money and energy. So what Albini Energia does? Albini Energia was established in 2011. And so uh, myself, Silvia and other colleagues were moved from uh, the technical office of uh, the textile factory to this uh, consultant company. And uh, we start working uh, with uh, all our customers in Italy, in China, Vietnam, uh, Ethiopia, and uh, in England and France. We normally start our activities in a, with, uh, with uh, customers with uh, an energy audit. Energy audit uh, all, uh, normally includes the investment payback analysis. There are, of course, uh, consultancy services in order to propose and install energy saving plans. As soon as we understand the customer needs, we try to design some recovery system and we make an offer and luckily we try to supply them. Our energy activities are mainly related to new plant design, tanky textile plant, industrial design systems. I just want to focus your attention on another system that we are going to discuss later on, this is a self-cleaning heat exchanger. We patented that system in China, in Vietnam, and in Italy. We just received the patent for Vietnam in 2021. Uh, this is pretty important because we believe that that system can be used almost in all industrial textile factories which are using wet processes. So I'm talking about mainly dye houses, garment factories, some garment factories where they, do washes in the, uh, where they have a washing machine, and of course, finishing factories. Uh, 
I wanted to explain you a little bit how this system works because uh, uh, we have used it already in Vietnam a couple of times and uh, we, we believe that the product made uh, good results in term, uh, especially in terms of a payback, which is really pretty, uh, pretty short. The system is made by an it exchanger that can be done in mainly in two different ways. Pipe shell, as you can see in the picture on the left, and the plate it exchanger, as you can see in the picture on the on the right. Uh, we pass with the waste water through the pipes and the, the fresh water goes through the shell. But uh, what uh, the, the system, it was patented because uh, as you can imagine, the wastewater is full of uh, suspended solid. So there is a filter, uh, uh, automatic cleaning filter uh, in front of this heat exchanger. And then uh, there is uh, a chemical cleaning system. That's the core of our patent. I mean, uh, the one of the problem with the heat exchangers in the textile field, at least, is that uh, the uh, chemicals contained inside the, the wastewater uh, deposit itself on the walls of the heat exchangers, so on the pipes and on the plates. And so the efficiency drops very soon. And after a couple of months, your system efficiency drops off to 60, 50%. And it costs a lot of money and activities, work, uh, working hours to stop everything and clean it up. So we made a system which is able to clean itself alone automatically of course and if you don't mind i'd like to show you how does it work with a short video presentation that can really help to better understand how does it work okay the picture shows exactly all the elements that uh, uh, compose our system. First of all, uh, you see a plant, okay? Plant can be a batch system, so a tank that is able to connect all the hot waste water, or it can be a continuous machine, charge temperature that could be higher than 50, 60 degrees. The second part of the system is the heat exchanger, of course. As I told you, this heat exchanger can be um, done with a pipe shell heat exchanger, which is uh, the best solution if your uh, wastewater is uh, full of, um, of a suspended solid. And of course, uh, the, so basically the wastewater goes from the plant to this collection tank and is pumped through the heat exchanger. And finally, there is of course a boiler because we are going to need a steam to increase the temperature of our chemical solution. That's the standard operation of the heat exchanger, so it shows how the system works. The waste water goes into the tank and is pumped through the heat exchanger on the pipe side. Of course, in this case, we don't need to have a filter because the pipe can really upset suspended solid without any problem. In case of a plate heat exchanger, in this position after the pump, we normally insert a, a filter, a filter, a drum filter, in order to uh, remove all the suspended solid. So the wastewater is pumped through the pipes. And uh, on the other side, the fresh water goes uh, through the shell. We exchange the heat and uh, the fresh water becomes uh, warm. 
the waste water is thrown away cold and the fresh water warm it will be used in the factory as i told you before this system can be used for a batch system it means with many machines that usually discharge into a, a big tank and so in this case the warm water should be collected and then pumped again to the batches machine or eventually can be used directly on a continuous machine so this warm water will go directly into the washing or bleaching or mercerizing machine that's the core of the system so the acid self-cleaning cycle when the efficiency drop we have some sensor some flow meter and temperature probes in order to to calculate uh, and monitoring the energy efficiency of the heat exchanger. When it drops, uh, the heat exchanger goes uh, to a bypass uh, system and uh, the cleaning procedure starts uh, automatically. Basically, we dose uh, some chemical, which could be acetic uh, acid or lactic acid to the, mm, to, to the tank. And then we warm it up to 60, 70 degrees. Of course, we need to fill up some fresh water and the solution is warm it up to a certain temperature, which is normally 70, 80 degrees. Once it's ready, this solution is pumped through the pipes on the heat exchanger and circulated again into the collection tank. As soon as the cleaning procedure is finished, the solution is thrown away and the efficiency arises again to the nominal value which is higher than 85 90 percent and your solution your your procedure energy saving procedure can start again when you go to a textile factory you must try to understand which kind of processes they are handling with uh, we divide the processes in textile in two uh, different uh, um, kind. The first one is uh, um, dry processes, spinning, uh, weaving, uh, winding. So all those kind of processes are mainly related to the machine that your customer are using. So looms, uh, uh, weaving machines, uh, uh, spinning machines. So it's quite difficult to find out a way to be more efficient in those kind of machines because actually, if your customer has already the modern solution, all these machines are already equipped by frequency converters with a motor with high efficiency. So it's quite difficult to change and to make some progresses in such kind of machines. So when your customer has mainly dry processes, you should try to focus on the services, which is mainly related with HVAC systems, chiller system, boiler houses, if they need it. But uh, I don't think uh, uh, it's uh, mm, the, the part that you should focus on. We strongly believe that uh, the activities that we are trying to carry on is mainly related to the wet processes. In textile uh, field, the wet processes are uh, uh, dyeing or printing, preparation and finishing, okay? And those processes can be carried out with a continuous machine or batches machine or a combination of the two. 
What's a continuous machine? We talked about a little bit uh, earlier about it. It's uh, mainly related to some uh, big machine where the fabric pass through continuously. Uh, it's, um, they are made as a, a series of a vessel which uh, uh, represent uh, some process steps. The fabric pass from the first vessel to the next one and the water normally goes in the, um, in the opposite uh, direction, okay? In this, which kind of uh, uh, continuous processing you could have in, in, uh, with this kind of machine? Mainly we are talking about the bleaching which means uh, using uh, a peroxide or a caustic soda in order to clean uh, your fabric before uh, some other activities, uh, some other finishing activities. It could be mercerizing with caustic soda as well. It could be washing or rinsing after a printer, for instance. In this case, if uh, uh, you're talking about bleaching and um, and mercerizing, we are talking about the preparation part of the fabric. If you're talking about final rinsing after dyeing or after printing, we are talking about the finishing part of your, uh, of your fabric. There is a big difference because as I told you before, in the first part, which means bleaching and mercerizing, the cotton we are talking now about cotton mainly. The cotton is not treated yet. It means that it's full of a, a part of cotton that could be released into the water and becomes a, a, that become a suspended solid. Okay. So in case you want to put some heat recovery system on those machines you must remember that the quantity of suspended solid will be very high and you should handle them. On the other side, if you go to a rinsing after printing or after dyeing, the majority of the cotton will be already released. So the suspended solid in that, uh, the suspended solid quantity in that uh, uh, wastewater will be much less. Uh, the other process I want to talk about is the breast processing. It means that uh, you put your fabric or your cotton, your cones, your bobbins directly in one machine and uh, the cotton stays on that machine and all the process uh, is uh, performed in that machine. It's what happens, for instance, when you dye in cones or in bobbins, cotton or polyester or with which every kind of a fabric. In this case, the request of the water doesn't, um, is not continuous. So uh, it depends of the processes. And mainly the discharge is not completely related to the request of water. So there is some time where the machine is completely stop it, it doesn't request any water, it doesn't discharge any water, but uh, it's uh, just uh, making a sort of uh, thermal cycle. So for instance, increase the temperature, decrease the temperature, add chemicals, uh, adding uh, of um, dye stuff or everything. In, during this period, the water request is nothing and the water discharge is nothing. After this period, there is a discharge of water that is not uh, uh, contemporary with uh, a request of water. It means that every time you want to make a heat exchanging in this situation, you must consider that some bigger collection temp should be, uh, should be in order, right? Because uh, you must have a buffer of uh, hot waste water and the buffer of uh, preheated the fresh water to be used later on <coughs> on the machine. So in this case, of course, uh, the system will be much more complicated, more, much more expensive, and uh, it's more difficult uh, to build it in an existing factory. This is pretty important because uh, when you ask, with your customer will ask to help you to design the factory. It's pretty important to have in mind that if you want to have such kind of a heat recovery system, you, you must create those tanks, which are pretty important. And I'll show you later on how can you eventually do that. 
So in what processes there are some, uh, I, I show you now some example in order to save energy. The first one is what we have done in Hanoi, the factory I was talking about before. So the heat exchanger on batches machine. We are now talking about garment factory and that there are batches machine are just washing machine. They wash the garment after the, uh, after they have applied the resin for no iron. And we, uh, we have done a recovery, heat recovery of uh, the hot water, this uh, hot waste water that was discharged by those washing machines. Then we will show you a heat exchanger on the continuous process that uh, it was done in Vietnam as well, but uh, in an Italian uh, company uh, based on Vietnam, uh, Close, uh, close to Hanoi as well. And then uh, we will see how it's important to, to choose the right machine, washing and dyed machine. We will have a couple of examples of uh, how much is, mm, and this is also another uh, important subject I want to discuss with you. I mean, we believe uh, that uh, the efficiency, energy efficiency consultant cannot be just uh, on uh, services, but uh, also on the production machine. It's pretty important to ask uh, your customer to share with you all the information they have, even when they have to make uh, a investment decision because sometimes the right machine can help to saving money and of course energy and finally i'd like to show you how important it is to size correctly the pipes on the machine in order to save time and so electrical energy and thermal energy as well and now we'll try to show you some experiences we have done in Vietnam. We have some real numbers, the calculation of the payback. So this is what we have done. The situation we find out when we have been in this garment factory. As I told you before, in this case, the garment factory was using the washing machines to remove the raisins that they applied for no hiro a procedure into uh, in the in their garment mainly short short when we arrived to this uh, this factory we found out that they were quite uh, already quite good because they thrown away just the first rinsing with a 60 degrees they collected this first rinsing in the hot wastewater tank and they pump uh, they used to pump it to the wastewater treatment at 60 degrees. The second and the third rinsing was collected in the reusable water tank and eventually they used the steam in order to reach a certain temperature and they used to pump it to the washing machine for the third, for the second and the third rinsing. This is pretty important to understand. Anytime that the fabric or the garment is rinsed, what is pretty important is to throw away just the first rinsing, which is full of uh, um, suspended solid and chemicals. Usually the second and the third rinsing can be stored and used as a first rinsing and the second rinsing. The third one should be, must be with the fresh water because with the third one, you can guarantee the final quality of your product. This uh, looks uh, quite uh, uh, easy to understand, but unfortunately there are many factories that are still using fresh water, even for the first and the second rinsing. This is something that you should try to, uh, to um, push your customer to avoid because it doesn't make sense to use a fresh water during the first rinsing when the majority of the chemicals are still on your garment or on your fabric and so a reusable water can be easily used without any quality problem so uh, uh, we found this situation which is i told you is uh, quite good 
and uh, we have decided to uh, design a system able to recover the heat from uh, the wastewater, which was uh, already thrown away uh, with uh, the hot wastewater tank. The next uh, uh, slide shows uh, how the system we have designed works. Uh, so we have applied to the first rinsing a filter. And then because, uh, as I told you, the first rinsing is full of uh, uh, suspended solid. And then we have collected all this water to a collection tank and pump it to the heat, to a heat exchanger. The same we have done for the second and the third rinsing, which in general don't need a, a filter because suspender solid are not so much, but because we have decided to use a plate heat exchanger, we uh, needed to guarantee a, a certain uh, a water quite clean to avoid a, a lock of the system or the system that the system was in some way destructed. So we applied a, a filter a little bit more simple than the one we applied on the first rinsing and we collected this water in this collection tank. We pump it through the heat exchanger and we raise the temperature up to 58 degrees instead of before that was around 36, 38. And on the other hand, we reduce the temperature of the first rinsing from 60 to 37 degrees. This is also pretty important to understand. One of the reasons why the customer has decided to do the job is that because they were having problems to handle the high temperature of the wastewater treatment, which was affecting the bacteria in the biological part of their wastewater treatment plant. So they had the possibility, the option to insert a cooling tower in order to reduce the waste water treatment temperature from the first rinsing. But of course, if you think about it, it's a waste of energy because this temperature would be eventually dropped by using an adiabatic system that somehow is consuming, is going to consume electrical energy. So the basic idea is, was to reduce the temperature of this water system by increasing the temperature of the reusable water in order to get two different advantages. So the first one is to avoid the cooling tower investment. The second one to increase the temperature of the reusable water and uh, in this way, reducing the consumption of steam, which was uh, used before in order to reach the 58 degrees, uh, like uh, in, the, in the image uh, uh, we have shown.